Monroe, Louisiana, the city sitting on the banks of the Washita River, has grown from a trail stop with a fort to the eighth largest city of Louisiana. As it grew, Monroe had a colorful history with everything from gunfights in the streets to three fires which destroyed the downtown area to floods that devastated not only downtown Monroe but also other communities surrounding Monroe. As the town grew, so did the need for a financial center for its citizens. Washita National Bank became that financial hub in 1887. It was the only bank in North Louisiana outside of Shreveport. The original ONB building was located at 113 Grand Street. That building was a Monroe landmark. It was believed to have been built in the early 1800s by the late T.N. Connor, who served on the Monroe Town Council. One of its early occupants was the late governor, Sam McHenry, who was known as the old war horse of democracy. He maintained a law office at the site with his law partner, Colonel Bob Richardson, who was of the old school of Southern attorneys and was well known for his education and spotless attire. There is a memorial to Colonel Richardson in the Vicksburg National Military Park commemorating his service during the Civil War during the Siege of Vicksburg. He served as the head of the 17th Louisiana Infantry. When the building was passed to Washita National Bank, a new era began. It was overhauled and improved to make it suited to the purpose of a financial house. The bank was organized in April of 1887. The bank's capital when it opened was $50,000. Its first board of directors was composed of R.B. Blanks, R.M. Feol, S.W. Saunders, Uriah Millsaps, B.G. Meyer, D.A. Briard, Jr., Frank P. Stubbs, F.G. Hudson, and John P. Parker. All of these men were leaders and businessmen of the swiftly growing town of Monroe. From these humble beginnings, this building saw a large number of the citizens of Northeast Louisiana cross its threshold because the bank also handled extensive financial business in the northern parishes in the northeast part of the state. On April 20th, 1907, the Washita National Bank expanded by consolidating with the Monroe National Bank. It increased its capital to $200,000 plus a surplus of $100,000. The name Washita National Bank was retained after the consolidation. T.E. Flournoy became president of the bank at the time of the consolidation, succeeding the second president, Uriah Millsaps, who was also the president of the Washita Parish Police Jury and Monroe Hardware Company. The bank, after several other consolidations and changes of location, dedicated the present building on December 14, 1921. With the motto, a greater bank for a greater Monroe, the new building opened its doors to throngs of citizens who wanted to see Monroe's first skyscraper. The structure which stands in the heart of the business district was recognized as a monument of men's faith in the future greatness of Monroe. It was lighted by a searchlight in front of the building for the dedication to draw the public in to tour. The local newspaper stated in the dedication article, the visitors were not confined to any particular class, but men and women from all walks of life came to be inspired by the architectural beauty that pervaded the throngs and hovered like a directing light above them. H.T. Underwood of the Underwood Contracting Corporation of New Orleans was the contractor for this massive project. Underwood said, you will not find a building in Louisiana to compare with the Washita National Bank's structure and probably none in the South. Underwood also designed the equipment and furnishings of the building, which included rooms of great beauty like the director's room with its fireplace of walnut and convent sienna marble. It contained a long conference table also made of walnut. The original board table uh, came up missing after uh, one of the large tenants moved out years ago. And uh, so when we bought the building, the original board table was missing. And just a few years after we bought the building, our property manager went to a meeting uh, at a local business and they had just gotten a new antique table 
and he recognized it as the board table from the Washington National Bank boardroom. And we approached them about buying it from them and they were very, very nice. They let, let us buy them a new board table and they gave us the old board table. And so we, we now have the original board table for the Washington National Bank building. Alfred S. Gottlieb of New York City was the building's architect. At that time, the building was a structure of 11 stories with a basement, mezzanine, and nine floors of offices and 16 offices to each floor. The building is said to be of the Italian Renaissance, a form of architecture and design which came into popularity in Italy during the 15th century and which is based on Roman classic design found throughout Europe. The structure was built on a lot of approximately 85 by 119 feet, with the foundation extending 12 feet below the street level and resting upon concrete piles. The building is of reinforced concrete, as are all floors, columns, beams, and girders. The bank building continues to house Monroe's only city club, which features Tiffany windows. During the 20s and 30s, the city club was also reportedly a casino and was open 24 hours a day. It was rumored that Delta Airlines founder T.E. Woolman would come to the club and sell shares of Delta stock in order to buy gas to fly his planes and keep them on schedule. Governor Huey P. Long and other important people frequented the city club. During poker games, which were famous at the time, sometimes deeds to plantations changed hands. The old casino safe was recently discovered in the building's basement. It was determined to date back to the 1800s. We found the old casino safe in the basement that they had at the Lotus Club, and uh, we restored it. And uh, of course, when we first got it, with oh, there was no combination, so we just had to get in and see what was in it. And I think uh, when we finally got it opened up, it was a few pennies, and uh, <laughs> it had been cleaned out. <laughs> At some point in time, an extra floor was added to the building, making it 12 stories tall, which classifies it as a skyscraper. And it's the only high-rise building in Northeast Louisiana to hold this title. Through the years, the building has been home to some of Monroe's most prestigious businessmen and leaders, including Congressman Otto Passman, Monroe Mayor Melvin Rambin, architect King Stubbs, Judge Paul Fink, and the list goes on and on from there. This, this old building brings back a lot of, lot of memories. Uh, one, of the, one of the things I, I, I most remember is the hustle and bustle of this building because it was, it was just full of people. The Hudson Potts and Bernstein Law Firm was on the 10th floor, the Shotwell Brown and Sperry Law Firm. Uh, there was a couple of doctors, a couple of dentists in the building, insurance people, oil and gas people. The building served as the home of Washita National Bank for 70 years when it was sold to Bank One. Well, you know, I've been here for almost 30 years, and I've seen all kinds of stuff. We had a little fire one time, had to get put out, and I've, a boiler blew up on me in the basement one time. So there's been some really interesting things that I've had to encounter uh, through the years and handle, and um, so it, it has become part of me. Uh, if you leave after you've been here for 30 years, if you leave for a while, you keep wanting to go back and shut the gate so the cows don't get out or something. You, know, you keep wanting to come back and uh, take care of the building so it becomes part of you. Uh, uh, people say, well, Doug, do you run the building there? And uh, the answer is, no, it runs me. <laughs> the tower stayed 95% occupied until 1998 when Bank One sold the tower to a real estate developer. During this time, the tower served in part as the Washita Parish Courthouse, while the old courthouse was being renovated. The reason we uh, ended up buying the Washington National Bank building was that they had had some office space for rent and I went and looked at the space and I really fell in love with the building and I'd, I'd grown up here and I remember as a child walking through the building with my mother and um, so I really liked the building but the space that was for rent really needed to be renovated and I, I couldn't see spending the money to renovate rental, rental space uh, so I had decided not to rent the space. I went on a trip with a very good friend of mine Dr. Kerry Anders we went to a conference together in Kansas City and 
while we were there, he was always asking me what my plans were with Vantage. And he asked, uh, actually riding in his car, and he, he asked me what were my plans as far as a building for Vantage because he knew we were outgrowing the space we were in. And I told him I really didn't have any. He said, well, well tell me what you'd do if you could do anything you wanted to do. And I said, well, I'd buy the old Washington National Bank building downtown and renovate it and move into it. And I said, but it's not for sale. And uh, we got back and about three months later, he came into my office with a, a antique car magazine. And there was an ad in the antique car magazine that um, a man that lives in uh, Gonzales, Louisiana was auctioning off his antique car collection. And he was auctioning off some old buildings that he owned around the state of Louisiana. And there was a picture of the Washington National Bank on the ad. And uh, Kerry brought the magazine into my office said, here, go buy your building. And so I checked to see when the auction was. And uh, we did, in fact, go to the auction. And we ended up buying the Washington National Bank building, the tower, um, what the Monroe Building Loan Building, and what used to be the Merrill Lynch Building. We also bought the parking garage and a lot on the river, all at that auction. Vantage Health Plan bought the building in the fall of 2003 and began extensive renovations. Another renovation project was initiated in 2013 to continue further restoration and enhancements to the building. When we first moved in the building, you know, Vantage had about 60 or so employees, and so we only needed about three floors. We, uh, my wife Sissy and I walked through the building and we really looked at the worst three floors and it was the second floor, the third floor, and the tenth floor. And those floors had been renovated time and time again over the years and most of the original woodwork uh, in the, hadn't been torn out years ago. So we originally renovated the second, third, and tenth floors. Since we've been here now, we've renovated every floor um, to some extent, most of them completely. And uh, on the first floor, we just recently finished renovating the banquet room. And we've started working on the grand lobby. But we want to use the main front entrance as it was used when the building was originally built in 1921. The front door hasn't been used now probably for 20 or 30 years. And uh, so we're gonna renovate that and we'll be the front door again. Also, the long walkway from the parking garage uh, will eventually empty into that grand lobby. So everyone entering the building will walk through the Grand Lobby once it's completed. Vantage Health Plan is honored to be able to preserve the historical significance of the Washita National Bank building for the city of Monroe and its citizens. <laughs>